Hi, my name is Kevin Jones. I'm the workers' comp specialist with the Dodge Jones Injury Law Firm. We have offices uh, all around eastern North Carolina, New Bern, Moorhead City, Beaufort, Jacksonville, and Greenville. I'm here to talk to you about some frequently asked questions that I get uh, in my practice uh, as a workers' comp lawyer. Uh, and one of those has to do with Family Medical Leave Act. Oftentimes, when someone goes out for uh, a work-related injury, uh, the employer, if, if that act applies to them, if they're a big enough company where the, the FMLA applies to them, they will, they will ask that employee, they will force that employee to go ahead and start their FMLA leave period. And that causes a lot of concern with folks. They want to know why. They don't understand. They're, I'm out on workers' comp. Why are they putting me on family medical leave? Um, and the answer is, is that they can do that, and uh, it, it can be for several reasons, but none of them are helpful to the injured worker. Uh, they want to keep their options open. So when they start the FMLA um, and it gets used up, then they have the option to go ahead, if that person is still out of work on doctor's orders because of the work-related injury, they have the option to then uh, go ahead and terminate that person and fill their spot. And they sometimes do that. As soon as the leave period's over, boom, letter goes out. We can't accommodate your restrictions or you're still out of work unless you can give us a return to work note. You're going to be let go. And then they replace that person uh, with someone else in that job and the job's gone. Other employers will, will do the FMLA, get to the end of the FMLA, uh, and then they'll extend it. And sometimes indefinitely. And the reason that those employers may do that sometimes is they, again, want to keep their options open. They want to be able to say at any point in time that they want to have a reason to, to, to put somebody back at work and get them off the comp check and put them on a, in a light duty job. They want to keep that option open. And sometimes that can be a, a great thing for an injured worker and other times it can be something that's a problem. It really depends on uh, the situation with the employer. So, it, you know, one person going back to work light duty may be wonderful because, okay, now I'm back to working towards my retirement because I'm collecting a paycheck instead of a worker's comp check. So I'm, I'm counting up days that add to my overall period of employment, which can help, plus uh, the, 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 all the other benefits stay in place. And that can be a good thing for one employee. And then for other employees, it could be a bad thing because it could be an employer that's just looking for a reason to get the workers' comp check stopped and then come up with some other reason to then let that person go after the check is stopped. One of the things about workers' comp that a lot of people don't realize is that when you were out of work receiving a check and it's an admitted claim, and when I say a check, a disability check, what's called a temporary total disability check, uh, when you're out of work, the employer and the workers comp adjuster, workers comp carrier, in order to stop that check, they have to have permission from the industrial commission. They have to file a motion. There's an opportunity to respond. There's a telephonic hearing with the lawyers on the phone, and then there's a decision that's made as to whether or not they're going to grant their request to either terminate or suspend those benefits. And so that right is important to an injured worker in a situation where they may, may be walking into a very uh, adversarial employment relationship when they go back to work light duty, where, they're, where they may be getting picked on, where they may be getting uh, confusing instructions, where they may be getting uh, 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 set up to, to be terminated, to take steps to terminate. Uh, a lot of those things can and do happen. So. When this is going on, you, uh, you've got to understand the specifics of your situation and you've got to get advice about, in your case, what should you do. Uh, and I tell people it's a case-by-case -case basis. People ask me a lot, what if, they, what if they want me to go back to work light duty? And my answer is always this. It depends on what the offer is. It depends on what the doctor says. It depends on uh, the circumstances of the case, where we are in the litigation, if there is litigation, what's been filed with the commission and what has not. Um, and so 
one case that to the outside, it may look like, okay, Kevin said this person should go back to work in the light duty job. In, the, in, in one that looks very similar, I may have different advice because of the specifics of that case. The bottom line is that the, the, the return to work decision, whether or not uh, you go back to work, uh, is really, really important and you really do need legal advice if there's any concern at all about what might happen when you go back. Because circling back around to where I started, if you're not at work and receiving a check, they have to file a motion to cut you off from your benefits. If you've actually gone back to work and clocked in even for a few minutes uh, and then they decide that they don't need you and they decide to let you go, and I've seen it happen more than once, they don't need anybody's permission to cut off that check. They simply file a return to work form, either a trial return to work form or a regular return to work form, and that's it. They're done and you would have to go to court and spend potentially years trying to get those benefits reinstated because you've gone back to work and they were legally allowed to cut the check off by filing a piece of paper without having to ask anyone's permission. So if there is real concern that the only reason an employer is trying to get you back to work is so they can cut the check off and they're very, very shortly thereafter going to let you go, then you really need to get legal advice about what to do because whether you go back or not can have drastic consequences because on the flip side, if you refuse that job, they are going to file a motion to cut your check off and we better have good grounds to keep that from being approved if we're going to say no to a job. If you have more specific questions about your claim, if you're worried about a light duty job that's being offered or that you're already working and would like to talk to me about it, give us a call. I'm happy to sit down with you.